Moving on to question three. And they put a spreadsheet question one time. Now, at first glance, when I looked at this paper, I was like, wait, look at data in that spreadsheet. That is a lot of things. They're going to ask all kind of madness inside there. And... Emotional, damn it! All the people I was watching the live stream the night before and I told y'all, you better know your spreadsheets because you'll have to, they'll ask you all kind of things about spreadsheets. This is where they ask you stuff about spreadsheets that goes in depth into the functions. However, however, I was so glad to see, I was so glad to see that they were like, write the spreadsheet formulae or functions. I was like, oh my goodness. Somebody, somebody paid attention to like the fact that formulas and functions, formulas and functions are different. And I ain't gonna lie to you. I pulled aside and I, I literally, a tear came to my eye. It was tears of joy. It was tears of joy. Because for, for the past few years, they're mixing up the word function and formula and students getting confused. But no, they're not. So we want to find the total traffic observed at 11 a.m. Total traffic observed is 11 a.m. So you want to calculate all of these things here. Basically, that. Total traffic at 11 a.m. So that'll be the sum of B5 to F5. Yeah. So equals sum B5 colon F5. Right, so it's two marks. You get one mark for having the equal sign sum and you get the next mark for B5 colon F5. If you do have the equal sign, you'll get it wrong. The total road tax owes if every car that crosses the highway pays $5. So it does a function equal um every car that crosses the highway. This is the total amount here, right? Yeah, total amount of cars that cross the highway. Yeah. So that is G12 multiplied by 5. Well, G12. G12 multiplied by 5. Um, wait, what is it? Every car. Oh, shucks, this car is car. My bad. Car, car, car. Total cars is B, E, B12, B12. Sorry. If they, if they wanted all, they would have said, um, they would have said vehicles, but there's only cars they want, so it's B12. All right, so equal B12 multiplied by 5. So don't check the total amount of vehicles overall. It'll be B12 by 5. Because it said every car that crosses the highway, every car that crosses the highway, the total is down here. Multiply that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Correct. Um, yeah. Two marks. So one mark for knowing I have to use... B12 and the next mark when you have to use multiplication. Do the spreadsheet feature that allows users to summarize and manipulate data without making changes to the worksheet. Summarize data is always a pivot table. That's basically the definition of a pivot table. The ability to summarize data. Um, yeah. State the function that has produced the values in column H with a field heading of answer. This one was this one was weird. I really ain't too sure why, but the function that produced the answer each, it's um that's the average amount of cars. Oh, you know is the average? No, not the average, no. Yeah. So interpret that this is the average. This is difficult because under exam situations, you're really gonna be able to do all that maths one time. But if you look at any of these and you calculate the average of any of these numbers, you should be able to realize that you get like 100. You're, you're able to get the average. So look, if you look at this row here, 100, 184, 63, 42, and 13, that sounds like our average of, yeah. So you take the number and you divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, if you divide this number by 5, you'll get the average. So the function is equal average. All right, remember, you can't put AVG. It is average but if you put it with average they just say steady function they say they didn't say that it's supposed to work it just has to work so average is cool yeah i don't think i had to put the equal sign i just have custom putting equal sign so um because you don't want to lose on um yeah right now if you look up where where dreams go to die when 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 the students see we look up they're like <laughs> 
running? Why are you running? But the ones who went through my videos on spreadsheets and went through the videos on the app all was who or who um who did the crash course or whatnot. All of it was like, ah boy, we look up the one thing that I make sure I know because so explain that yesterday. Yeah. So a VLOOKUP has four parts to it. The first part is the state exactly what the four parameters are. So they don't, when they say exactly, you don't want to get the exact, exact thing that the spreadsheet looks for, but you have to be able to give the like clarity. So you have to be like um, search, search value or search cell or criteria, something like that, right? Anything along those lines, you should get a little mark there, right? Value, cell, criteria, whatever. When you look at um, Excel or you look at Google Sheets, you will see the exact terms that they use inside there. I think they use criteria or value, something like that. But see, I ain't beating up too much. Once you could show that, you know, this is what you're searching for. Sorry to interrupt your video, but this is future me talking to you while you're watching this. And if you are struggling with certain, a certain part of the IA, you just need some way to check over your IA. We do personal one-on-one -on -one IA classes. So if you want your IA to get a check over, just to make sure you have all your requirements on your marks, Make it simple to feel come for slash register. Okay, cool. Back to the video. Then the next thing you're looking, you're looking for is look up range. If you have range, I think that should be good too. Um, or you could say the look up table, or you could say the look up section, something like that. The section that you want to look up for. Um, the any part is the column that you want to return to return or return value. Something like that should be okay. And then the last part is if uh, you want the exact flash approximate match. A B R X I M A T match. Or sorted slash unsorted. All right. Now if you know how um um if you know how to do a VLOOKUP, this was not a problem for you because you'd be okay. Um, for, for P2, if you put absolute cell reference in, nah, you wouldn't get that correct because whether you absolute cell reference in or not, you still have to show that you understand that is the range that you're looking for, or the section, or the table, or the lookup part. So you have to, you have to, um, you have to be specific, even though you don't have to use absolute cell reference. Like, um, the, the, the choice inside people is whether you put the word true or false, but what you're actually doing is you are answering a question. Is it, do you want the exact match or do you want the appro uh, approximate match? Do you want, is it sorted or is it not sorted? So the answer is yes or no, basically, or true or false. If you put true slash false, that's what you put inside. But I, I can't, I can't say that this is the actual, um, the actual parameter, the parameter that I'm looking for is if it's there. Yeah. All right, so that's all that they will act. That's all that you can get there. And those are all the different options, options that you can get. All right, this true or false thing, that's up to the examiners if they want to accept that. Um, if, if they're testing for understanding, then they won't accept true or false. But if they're testing for your knowledge of the, func of the function, they will accept it. All right, consider the following algorithm. Accept total vehicles if total vehicles is greater than 500. Print total fee, otherwise print. The only problem I have with this question is that it is almost like narrative, but that's okay. But oh gosh, man, they could have indent. I would have really loved it if they could indent the if. They would have indent the if then. Because that will make things a little easier for you to understand. Because indentation matters in life. But that's okay. I'd invite you to follow any type of algorithm shown. This is pseudocode because it's using shortened terms. Once you see variable names like total vehicles, you see numbers, you see um, words like print, and then you see otherwise pay toll. Yeah. If you put narrative, I um, I would have argued for narrative. Let me tell you why I would have argued for narrative, right? I would have definitely argued for narrative because they put is greater than. In pseudocode, when you want to say it's greater than, you usually just put the sign like that. So, I don't agree that this is fully pseudocode because it doesn't use all the pseudocode conventions. If it was using the pseudocode conventions, it should have put greater than 
the greater than sign. So I would argue for narrative if you're an examiner and you're watching this right now because as Kerwin does say, it has CXC spies all over the place because... How is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados allowing CX to do this to us? To the CXC spies, hi. Nice to meet you. All right. So if you put narrative, do um do we talk too much about it? I, I believe that they should accept it, right? Um but the three ways of representing our algorithm will be narrative, pseudocode, flowcharts, right? One variable is total vehicles. Total underscore vehicles. Um type of branching, this is called selection. Let me let you know one time you cannot put if then else. No. That is a implementation of branching. But you have to put selection. The only other thing you will get away with is conditional. Because it's con conditional branching. Actually, I think the answer is more conditional branching. But selection would be better too. But do not put if then else. They will not give you the mark. Because if then, if then else is just a way of representing a conditional branching. The type of branching is selection. All right. Cool. Good. All right. Use the algorithm and integrate the following input output chart. Nice question again, because it checks to see if you understand how to dissect the algorithm for its inputs, its processes, and its outputs, instead of just giving you a random pseudocode to write out. So I like this. So the input is total vehicles. I love questions where test students understanding, because understanding is what we really want to get out of the examination. We don't want the examination to be um be about just regurgitation. So total vehicles there, and then you want to see if total vehicles is greater than 500. So the processing is if total vehicles greater than 500, um, then, then print tool fee, otherwise print tool. So then let's write back the whole thing, right? Print tool fee. Tool free it is? Tool free. Okay, sorry. Print tool else print tool. For the output, you just want to pass slash to be like, okay, it could either be tool free or it could be tool. All right? That's the two outputs I could get. It could either say this or it's pay tool, my bad. Pay tool. Pay tool. Pay tool. Mm. Pay tool. Right, that'll be output. That, that is form one stuff. Form two, maybe. Form two, yeah, I'm teaching this to my form two right now. If you kept new quotations in the IPO, yeah, that's no problem. I don't see how you see that. Not, not too much. So much cake or like a diabetes with this, with this paper, boy. Jeez. Wow. That, you're diabetic now. All right, you need to use a dry run to test the algorithm for corrections. So that's three numbers that you would adequately write. So you want to get a number that's less than 500. So you could put 499. A number that's over 500, you could put 501. And then a number that is 500, you put 500. When you're testing an algorithm, you test it for high, low, and the actual number. That's that's just standard algorithming. And when you're teaching tests, test in algorithms, you always say, test it and any SBA have to you have to do tests also to test if a number is higher test if a number is lower and if it tests the actual number so for those of you all that did the um who did the SBA and did the programming part this shouldn't be too hard for you because yeah all right so higher lower and the exact number and then, well, no, this is weird. You know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We just do a whole set of things about algorithms and just boom. Networking just come in like a flood. You're like, what just happened there? How how networking just reach in? And yeah, that'd be like Because yes, even though I like the paper and even though the paper is a good one. This is one of the things that they do. They be like, all right, we need to make up some marks to get up to 25 marks. What topic we could just throw inside there? This had nothing to do with the previous scenario, nothing to match up with what was going on with the um with the vehicles and all that stuff. They just like, all right, what is our one? So um this is uh um what's that? In network 
that covers a large geographic location T-I-O-N. typically across continents or large land masses right why i have to put these things in is because there's two marks so you gotta you gotta put some meat on this you gotta put some meat on that because if you don't put meat on it you'll have them traffic data can be viewed by clicking a hyperlink on the ministry's homepage name two basic parts of a hyperlink right so a hyperlink usually has usually has the protocol the domain the folder and the file example https colon colon as the protocol the domain is amazon.com that's the domain forward slash cars forward slash um nissan.html so any one of these what i have there should be okay um yeah the two basic parts of hyperlink only two basic parts of a hyperlink could also be you could also put the text you click on and the url it goes to so the text you click on and the url i go to i would strongly argue for that answer too but i know what they, i know what they were looking for they was definitely looking for this there's no doubt about it they was looking for that but if i fight if i if i were there and i would and i fight it down i would tell them hey you have to accept the text that they click on and the url because those are the two parts of an actual hyperlink because a hyperlink is text that has a url behind it so yeah yeah if it have an icon to click on your text slash icon slash image yeah the icon image or text that you click on and the url that is behind it that's the two parts i i kind of i kind of want to believe that this is the answer that they're looking for but i also know that the syllabus clearly has that stated so yeah uh, i guess i guess that would be um yeah i guess that would be okay Right, so the most important aspect that must be considered when assessing the impact of automation on job security again they're like we need one mark to make it to 25. how will we make it to 25. kids anybody have a question anybody give me a question and then it's like okay well just draw a question about automation i don't know most important aspect that must be considered when automating the impact of automation on job security is the um loss of jobs because the impact the impact is definitely going to be the loss of jobs i can't i can't say anything and that's some real creative answers you could you could put here you could put increased crime rates because when people lose their jobs they will try to rob from you but i mean <laughs> um this is this this is essentially a giveaway mark right because this is a sociology question so you are actually like you know thinking about the social ills again thinking so i'm glad that the question exists so almost anything you put there will be good i i can't tell you otherwise that's 25 marks there all right so that is question or question we just did there. question three all right 